We've asked the press to ask them a few questions so that they can uh, get a feel for uh, the types of questions that are out there and the types of answers that they'd like to um, give to the folks in the community. So, Bill, if we could start with you. Thank you very much. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Um, there has been some talk recently um, regarding the positions of uh, school resource officer uh, and the um, in the DARE program. And there's been some questions about uh, whether the program is, is worthwhile, whether um, the schools need the, the resource officers that are there, whether that program uh, in tough, uh, whether that those positions in tough budget times might be able to be reduced. Um, how do you feel about the, uh, the school resource officers' positions, the DARE program that's offered? Um, and is that uh, something that you think uh, is open to uh, perhaps some, some budget reduction um, uh, overall, at least partially? George, you first. <clears throat> thanks. Thanks, Bill. That's a great question. It seems to be the theme this morning is great questions. Um, let's start with the school resource officers. They are an integral part of the programs that we offer at our schools. Um, I, I don't want to see them go. I think that they are extremely important in not only the programs that we deliver, but in getting our students familiar with police, familiar with the function of the police department, and understanding that they can go to these individuals when they have issues. I think one of the other uh, great benefits is we have 5,600 kids in our schools every single day. Having a police officer there ready to handle anything that comes up is very important. Case in point, we had a problem at a private kindergarten, which happens to be in the center of town. One of the first responding officers, if not the first responding officer, was the uh, SRO from the elementary schools. And he was there within minutes. Um, that's critical to the protection of our kids. The DARE program, all three of my kids went through the DARE program. Uh, I think it's extremely valuable. I'm disappointed that, you know, there's a, there's a gap that we're probably going to experience there. I think that, uh, you know, there are things that we can do. Um, I don't want to see it gone. I, I think it is, a, again, an important part of our curriculum. It's an important part of what we teach our kids and how we help them live their lives. So I, I think we need to make the efforts on the town side to, to get the funding there. Um, the DARE program is a national a national program. I'm not opposed to looking at other programs, similar types. I'm not opposed to looking at even a homegrown type of program, but I think the function that that program serves is critical. So I think it needs to be there. Thank you. John. I'll start with the DARE program. If I'm not mistaken, the primary reason that the DARE program's uh, continuance in the school district is in play is because the retiring officer who's currently the DARE officer stood up in a uh, meeting and said, if you want to cut, maybe you want to cut this program. I don't care. I'm not going to be here. Probably not the way that we ought to be making educational decisions for the kids. I think George is right. I think that um, we can look at homegrown programs, alternative programs that offer the same thing. But drug awareness resistance education, I mean, seems like something that you want to continue to have in the school. Which leads me to the next point about the school resource officers. I remember a few years ago, um, one student in the high school managed to uh, imbibe a little bit too much which is a silly thing to say because any imbibing at that age is too much, uh, before school started, and it was an assistant principal and the resource officer right. who rescued the student out of a snowbank. I remember in 2001, and I'm going to sound like Rudy Giuliani here, but we had an exchange student from Jordan, and on the morning of September 11th, before anybody knew what was going on, there was a school resource officer standing behind this kid just in case things got out of hand and the kid needed some protection. We've got 
thousands of kids in schools. We've got a volatile society where any number of things can happen, as witnessed, as George said, by the incident at the um, Presbyterian Church a little while ago. Does it make sense to have a resource officer there? Sure it does. In addition to the reasons that George said, very wise reasons of letting kids learn who the good guys are in their formative years, I don't think there's a higher value target in Londonderry during school hours than the place where five, 6,000 kids are. Why don't you protect places where the high value assets are? Only makes sense. Thank you. April, your question. All right, my question for you this morning, um, or afternoon rather. <laughs> I'm considering the low turnout at school deliberative sessions over the past few years. Should the minimum number of voters required be lowered before action may be taken, in your opinion? John, let's go with you. I'm not opposed to the idea. Decisions are made by people who show up, obviously. <laughs> that was something that was raised earlier in the, in the town council discussion about uh, whether town meeting should continue. Um, but I don't know what number you'd lower it to. I mean, is 250 a reasonable number in a year where something like 140 showed up? Do we lower it to 140? Do we lower the number to whatever number people, you know, whatever number is just below whatever count showed up this year? That's a little bit like the state lowering the state property tax for education until it's a dollar less than the, than the most affluent town pays so that there isn't any town paying money out. It sounds like a bit of a shell game. I think that there is ample opportunity for people to show up and participate. I think that things like the school budget goes through a rigorous program, a rigorous process by both the budget committee and the school board. At many opportunities can people come in and participate. And I think that instead of looking at the <coughs> attendance number as saying, people don't come out because they can't participate. I think you ought to maybe consider that perhaps people are basically satisfied with the representatives they've elected to make these decisions, review these questions, and consider the lack of attendance to be something similar to a lack of disagreement. Maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's a positive sign. Lower the number, sure. But where to, I don't know. George. Thanks, April. Um, I'd be willing to entertain lowering the number, but like John, I'm not sure what we would num lower the number to. The primary focus of the deliberative session is to discuss the Warren articles and provide the community an opportunity to change those articles with a minimum of 500 registered voters. Um, this year we happened to be approached uh, on the board by a resident who thought that it was the venue that was the problem. And he was asking us to move the venue over to the gym because it could hold more people. And, you know, we opted not to do that because there's a cost associated that of about $3,500. Uh, if you were at the deliberative session, you saw we had enough chairs there for, I think we set up about 300 and some odd chairs. I think we got, we were, there was 81 on each side, so 162 people did show up. As John pointed out, opportunities start in October and November to start talking about the budget. I'm trying to think in the past three years that I've sat on the board, other than the budget committee, less than a handful of people have come to express